Would you like to know the tech skills of the future and the tech jobs of the future, those that can't be replaced by AI? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to discuss the tech skills of the future, and we're gonna provide examples of those tech skills in action. And then we're gonna talk about the AI proof jobs that require all of the tech skills of the future. And of course, none of these things can be done by AI, and that's why they're tech skills of the future. And the good news is that these future proof jobs typically pay two to three times that of the hands-on tech jobs that exist by AI. And uh, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, when we talk about the tech skills, they're not just my opinion. They're actually the opinion of the World Economic Forum and their recent Future of Jobs report. My team will leave the link to the Future of Jobs report in the description of this video because I'd love you to read it for yourself because it's enlightening if you're not used to thinking this way. So the first tech skill we're going to talk about is something called strategic thinking and judgment. And let me give you an example. So let's say we have a global bank and they're considering whether they could adopt a single cloud uh, and go to a single cloud due to convenience. Uh, from an enterprise architect perspective, we're going to have to look at the risk of that. We're going to have to weigh the long-term regulatory risk. We're going to have to worry about the availability risks. We're going to be thinking about vendor lock-in and what's associated with that. And uh, can we even afford to take that risk? So that enterprise architect is, and those cloud architects are going to be spending a lot of time planning and mapping out risk and risk reduction strategies and looking at best of breed versus proprietary. And that could go on for months. So that kind of strategic thinking and judgment to be able to think about it and say, you know what? It's just too big of a risk. Let's do this instead. So that's one of the first skills, strategic thinking and judgment. And none of that can be replaced by AI. Now, the next skill is creative problem solving. So let's say we have, a, a, say, a healthcare provider. And that healthcare provider wants to share certain types of patient data across various hospitals. But there's a lot of regulatory things that have to happen along the way. Is it data that we have to de-identify that we could use for, say, medical research along the way? And if so, how would we de-identify that critical data? Is it data that we could push between, say, business associates, according to HIPAA? And how would we do this? Do we come up with, say, maybe a federated uh, API to make it simple? Do we come up with another environment, a different type of exchange? So that's an example of creative problem solving that you see architects are going to have to do. Now, leadership and influence. So the key here is Anything big, like any kind of digital transformation initiative, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take understanding of the business needs, speaking to the organization, stakeholders, getting the stakeholders' needs, uh, negotiating between stakeholders, negotiating between IET executives, you know, creating a strategy, getting the stakeholders' feedback, tuning the strategy, and going back and forth for a long time, and ultimately convincing the stakeholders to adopt the strategy. For example, if a security architect can't convince the stakeholders to adopt their strategy and they can't convince the management to spend money on security and that organization gets hacked, that organization has a problem. So that kind of leadership and influence is going to be absolutely critical for any of the roles of the future. Now, analytical thinking is another one. So the biggest part of some jobs is... We have to realize, especially like an enterprise architect, a cloud architect, or a security architect, there's no perfect anything. We can never create a perfectly safe environment from a security architecture perspective. It's impossible. We can uh, manage risks to a plane, but if we tried to get perfectly safe, every business would be out of business. So we have to analyze between the trade-offs, analyze between our options, analyze, you know, where do I put this workload? Do I put it in the cloud? Do I put it in the data center? It's an analysis we have to think about. We may have to do some business modeling and plan uh, the operational and financial impacts. So we have to think about all of that and kind of make decisions and recommendations. Analytical thinking is a skill of the future, and I, I can't do that. Now, technological fluency, yeah, the World Economic Forum definitely talked about that, and that is a key skill for any kind of technology professional. But uh, the key here is the fluency in the technology and what you're doing with the technology. Not how to code it, AI can do that. Not how to configure it, AI can do that. But we have a technology. How do we use that technology strategically? How do we gain the benefits of that technology on our business? 
What's the difference between the hype and the reality? So be able to go in there, separate the forest from the trees, and make a strategic recommendation of something that's going to make a difference. That's technological fluency. Now, leadership and social influence. Now, I've always talked to this uh, throughout my career about how critical it is. Because if you can't influence the stakeholders, if you can't influence the people into buying your solution, you've got nothing other than pretty PowerPoint wear and pretty Word documents you wrote along the way. So you will need absolute strong influence from a security arc perspective to convince the organization for risk mitigation, from an enterprise architect perspective to be able to create a new governance structure or to optimize a business process or to align the business and technology. It's going to take coordination of a large number of people leading our teams. So leadership and social influence cannot be done by AI. Now, systems thinking. You know, this was something that's been near and dear to me because I came from healthcare and they forced us to learn systems theory, which basically is if something happens in one part of the system, it'll reverberate to the rest of the system and may impact other things. Now, that probably helped me so much in my architecture career because as an architect or as a business executive, we have to think in systems. What's going on between the interdependency between logistics and payments and compliance and the tech? So all of that we have to think in systems. What's the impact of a new firewall rule on the global system? What's the impact of a new extranet provider going to someone else on the overall security of the system? Do we do it? Do we not do it? So these are the types of technology skills, systems thinking. And that's why both me and the World Economic Forum have listed this. Now, one thing that's uh, not a tech skill, but it's still a skill of the future, and to me it's always been a critical skill, is resilience, agility, and adaptability. Let's face it, technology is now accelerating. I was here to design parts of the internet. I was part of the big internet boom. That's when I started networking, advising internet service providers. After that, you know, I was here to design clouds, and I saw that boom, but AI is, I've, has had an investment like nothing I have ever seen in my entire life. And because AI can now do things so much faster than people could in many cases, simulating a new drug practically overnight, uh, the ability to create certain things so very rapidly, I expect the world to change much faster. The World Economic Forum expects the world to change much faster. And because of that, the ability to adapt and learn new things becomes increasingly critical. So these are the skills of the future because AI can't do this. AI can code, AI can figure, but AI cannot do these types of things. So which jobs, actually speaking, actually will require you to have these skills? Because according to the World Economic Forum, 50% of the people are going to need reskilling significantly if they're going to want to work in the future because that type of uh, shift from AI and what's coming soon with all the investment there. So let's talk about the first job. The enterprise architect, that requires every single skill on the list. Whether it's related to leading uh, digital transformation initiatives or lining business and IT needs or an architecture strategy. We look at a cloud architect. It requires creative thinking, strategic planning, communication skills, technological literacy, almost everything on this list. We look at an AI architect, analytical thinking, business acumen, technological literacy, AI solutions, big data, all that stuff's on the list. The security architect who's getting involved in governance, uh, risk management, compliance, risk analysis, strategic planning, presenting to executives, analyzing things, again, almost all the skills. Same thing for a solutions architect. You're going to be doing all these same things, working with clients, uh, working with uh, key stakeholders, giving presentations, influencing others, almost all the same skills. How about a technology sales engineer or a technology sales rep? In either case, an account manager, for example, is going to be leading the client, influencing the client, helping with an analysis, coming up with business ready strategies. A sales engineer is going to do the same thing. They're going to have to get in there. They're going to have to influence people. They're going to have to communicate. They're going to have to analyze. So again, those roles too. Sales executive, sales engineer. Digital transformation leads. Again, this is a position where you take a company and you change the way it does things with technology. So they will require all the skills of digital transformation lead. A program manager, as a rule, someone that runs like a large security program or a very large project manager that's going to lead a deployment of something, say, 5,000 remote locations, that person's going to need all of these same skills. The chief information officer, leadership, judgment, the fertile spectrum of all these skills. So again, we're dealing with the same thing. 
a strategy consultant, whether it be a management consultant in tech or a strategy consultant in, in technology. Same kind of business acumen, leadership, executive presence, influence. Uh, so all these same skills. So these are the jobs of the future, and I think I hope you understand why. Because these are the things that can't be done by AI, and these are the specialty jobs. Now, the key is these roles that I'm talking about, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect, sales executive, VP of sales, any of that kind of stuff, these are some of the highest paying tech jobs in the world. They can't be replaced by AI. And there are such critical shortages because very few people have these skills, and these are the skills for the future. So that are the tech skills for the future, and these are the AI-proof tech jobs for the future. Now, if you're interested in becoming, say, a cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect, join me on a free architecture webinar. We run two each week. And on these webinars, we talk about what we do as architects. We talk about the skills that you actually need as architects. We'll talk about how to stand out and how to go out there and get hired as an architect. And it's all free. You can register and you can ask me questions live and free on Zoom about your career and I'll do anything I can to help you. You can register for these free architecture webinars. The link is in the description of this video. While you're in the description of this video, we've got free guides on becoming, say, an AI architect or a cloud architect. We've got free guides on how to win the interview. So sign up for some of these free resources to help you with your IT architect career and they're in the description of this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, maybe subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you with your enterprise architect career, cloud architect career, security architect career, or AI architect career, or honestly, any other architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now and I hope to see you in a webinar or another video. Take care.